Hello learners and welcome again to EMAS with Mesha Kingige and as I promised today we are going to be checking how to solve and find roots of our complex equation so kindly keep locked remember to subscribe share and also comment if these lessons are being helpful to you now we have a question here that appears in the next past paper and uh, it says if z equals 2 this is a complex number negative 1 plus j is a root of this equation that is z to power 4 r plus 2z cubed r plus 6z squared plus 8z plus 8 equals to 0 determine the other roots determine the other roots now let's check the solution but before we check the solution i like to give us a highlight of how these solutions um, are achieved so there's some few uh, two or three things which you need to know about uh, about complex equation so now let's start from the very basic thing that we know let's solve this equation x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals to 0 right so this is very easy because you're supposed to get two numbers which when you multiply gives you 6 which when you add gives you what it gives you 5 and those two numbers by the end of the day will be which number and which number yes that number will be 2 and uh, 3 all right so the value of x here that is the root all right those are what we call roots by the end of the day or zeros all right so the value of x in this part because we always say we always say that indeed x out of our solutions with either b x plus 2 equals to 0 or x plus 3 equals to what equals to zero so in this case our value of x will be what will be negative two and our value of x here will be negative negative of three now the what we need to understand here that will help us in solving this is one thing that we can now start from our roots and go back to having our equations so how do we do that we just reverse so if we are given the roots you can form factors so you are you have the roots so from the roots we can have something so from the roots so we can go in this step we can go from the roots we go to factors all right then from the factors we go to the what we go to the equation all right so um the rfe so the roots the factors then we go to the to the equations so therefore if we have the roots uh, how do we get x plus 2? So we return the negative of 2 to this other side. So we shall have x plus 2. And also we can return the 3 at the negative of 3. So it becomes x. It is negative. It becomes what? It becomes positive. It gives you 0. All right. Therefore, expanding these, we shall have x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6, which gives you 0. Then x squared plus 5x plus 6 which will give you 0 all right so this is very important because you can see you know a question here you are given the roots and you are supposed to go back and find the other roots and uh, how we how shall we solve that we shall start from the roots and uh, uh, slowly build up on the roots to form uh, a number of equations then another thing that we need to note is in complex number, so we can say, I can just call this one an NB1, all right? This one is a um, NB1. Then our NB2 is uh, what we did in division of our complex numbers. That when you multiply A, let's say we have your A, sorry. Let's say you have been given complex number Z equals to A plus BJ. And you have z2, so if this one is z1, z2, a minus bj. So if this one is our function, uh, this one is our complex number z. What do we call this? Uh, the one that has changed the sign? It is called the what? The conjugate. And when you multiply a complex number, so let me say this one is my z1, z2. Complex times its conjugate. What did we get? We said our answer will always be a squared plus b squared, right? Yes, so kindly revisit the, the lesson on division of complex numbers and you shall see how this came to be. So we need those two things. We need this and we need what? And we need, um, we need to know 
we can come from the roots going upwards. And B3, these are just uh, things that you know, but I feel they are important because once you understand this, then solving such an equation uh, will really uh, help you a lot. And B3, let's do a very simple division because I know how we do division, but I want you to think it in this way. Now, we have two divided by what? Uh, six divided by two. I'm sure this is uh, a grade one um, or grade two uh, example. So what do we get? What do we always say? We ask ourselves, how many times does two, all right? How many times does two go into six? And we say, ah, two goes into six how many times? Three. Then three times uh, two gives you six equals to what? Then you subtract these two terms and you get your answer being equals to zero. Now, let me give you another way of reasoning. The same, same question. Let me, yeah, let me use a different pen. So we have six. Uh, let me have two. Sorry. Now, I want you to reason it this way. How do I make, what, how, what will I do, what will I multiply two for me to make it to be the same as six? Because I want my two to be the same with whatever we have inside here, all right? So what will I multiply it with? So I'll, for me to make my two to be the same as six, I'll have to multiply it with what? I'll have to multiply it with three, all right? And therefore, 3 times 2 gives me again what? Give me 6 and goes to 0. So by the end of the day, what we shall be doing here, we shall be trying to make the function that is outside here, or the number that is outside here, to be the same with whatever is inside. All right? Uh, the, the division sign. So I want to make 2 to be the same as 6. So I'll have to multiply it by what? By 3. That is the argument that we shall be dealing with when solving this. So having the knowledge of all these three. Now, let us now solve our equation there. So now, solving this. This is an equation with the highest power being four. So depending on the highest power of an equation determines the number of roots that you're supposed to get. So since our power here is four, the highest power is four, let me write it correctly, is four, then we're supposed to get how many roots? Four roots. So we have already been given one. So how many do we need? We need three roots. So therefore, but we know one thing, complex numbers occur in conjugates. Are we together? So complex numbers or uh, roots, sorry, complex roots will always occur in conjugate. So therefore, if z equals to negative one plus j, is a root then we say then z equals to negative one minus j is also a root okay because roots in complex number will occur in pairs if this one is a root then when you change the sign of the imaginary part being uh, so if it is a positive it becomes negative we say therefore this one is also a root so how many roots do we have so far we have one we have two so how many remaining two roots now these are roots now from what we have just learned before you can come from roots for you to form what equations now we form forming equation uh, forming factor sorry forming factors from z1 and z2 then we shall take this to this side and this to this side. So we shall have z, then negative comes to this side becomes plus one, negative becomes what? Uh, positive becomes negative. So that is the first one. And again, this one on this other side, z plus one, then negative of j comes to this other side becomes positive of j, r factors, r factors. So remember, what have we just done? We have just taken this term to this side and this term to this side. So this term and this term become what we call factors. But remember now, complex number has a real part and imaginary part. So we can just divide this into two. So we have Z, sorry. So we have 
z plus 1 that is our real part then minus j and z plus 1 then plus j and you can always see that the real part is the same what only changes is the imaginary part now we know one thing we want so these are factors now from the factors we can now form an equation now multiplying these two so z plus 1 minus j multiplied by z plus 1 sorry uh, plus j what will we have as our solution when you multiply a complex number times its conjugate you shall get a squared plus b squared so in our case what is our a z plus 1 what is our b now we can just say 1 because it really doesn't matter because if you, if you square a negative number you get a positive so this one will just give us z plus 1 squared plus 1 because squared because our term at j is 1 all right our, our our number is just one so we shall have this so therefore by the end of the day we shall have expanding this part here remember this gives us z squared then twice this times this what is z times one z times one is z then times two because we say it is twice the multiplication of the first and the second term so it gives us z then plus the second term squared which is one one squared is just one then we have plus plus what plus one which therefore gives us z squared plus two z plus two by the end of the day so you can see we had our roots from the roots we formed factors and these factors are just these factors then the two factors have been multiplied together to get a squared plus b squared which is z plus one squared one squared expanding this therefore we shall have this square uh, this square then plus 2z plus 1 plus 1 then um, when you expand it further you just get this term the second step that I have shown you where we just did a uh, 2 a uh, 6 divided by 2 so now we shall take this equation here and div uh, we shall take this divide by this all right together so uh, we shall have z squared plus 2z plus 2 then z to power 4 plus 2z cubed plus 6z squared plus 8z plus 8 so the equation that we have formed here shall divide the equation that we had at the beginning therefore how do I make my term outside to be the same as the term that is inside? So, but we shall always be comparing with the first term that are of the remaining term that you have. So my highest power here is z to power 4. So how do I make my highest power here to be the same as highest power here? Right? So this one is z to power 4, this one is z to power 2. How do I make it the same? I'll have to multiply by z squared. Right? So that this will be the same as that so now this term will multiply by everything here so z squared times z squared gives us z to power 4 z squared times 2z cubed will give us a uh, 2 square z z squared times 2z will give me 2z what 2z cubed then z squared multiplied by 2 which will be 2z squared the same same way you do any division so subtract so this minus that zero this minus this zero six minus two will give me four z squared then since i've not touched these ones so i'll just drop them uh, z plus eight so these ones will just come down so i can say this one is subtraction so that this one comes down this one comes down now again i again check i have four z squared here right now this is the function that is remaining all together so i want to make this function here to be the same as this but we always check in regards to the first term here so my term here the first term here is 4z squared but here what do i have z squared so what is missing for me to make this to be the same as that i'm just missing out i'm just missing a, a 4 
Then I now take this variable and multiply with all this. This constant, I multiply with this. So 4 times z squared, I get what? 4z squared. Plus 4 times 2z, 8z. 4 times 2, I get what? 8. Then when I subtract these two, what do I have? I have a zero. Wow, this is amazing. So I have a zero here. So therefore that means when you multiply this function here and this function here, it will give you that function. You can always try that. Because we said, if you have a term here and another term here, you multiply the two of them, it will give you whatever we have inside. In case we had a remainder, then you'll add the remainder. But we don't. So therefore, therefore, if this equation here gave us these two roots, this root, this root, and this root, all right, together. Therefore, this equation here will give us the other two roots. So therefore, equating that z squared plus 4 gives us 0. So that is another equation which we need to solve for us to get our answer. So squared. So therefore, we shall have z squared equals to negative of what? Negative of 4, which gives us z will be the square root of what? Negative of uh, negative 4, the root of negative 4, which just from complex numbers is the same as saying the root of negative 1, the root of 4. You can split the 2. So the root of 4 is 2, all right? And uh, the root of negative 1 is what? A j. So we shall have what? So this one, and remember, we have plus or minus. So plus or minus, because we're involving what? We're involving roots when it comes here. So the root of uh, 4 is what? The root of 4 is 2, then that one is what? Is j. So, this one is a j, this one is 2, but it is positive or negative. So, therefore, how many uh, solutions do I have? One of the solutions of z will be, remember this, the value of z, one of the solutions of z will be 2j, and my other solution will be, or z equals to negative of 2 j and i basically told you that complex roots will occur in pairs so if i have a plus 2j i must have a negative 2j and therefore these are the two remaining roots so therefore the all roots that i have will be z equals to 2j z equals to negative 2j z equals to negative 1 plus j and z equals to negative 1 minus j and if you multiply this number this number uh the factors eh? if you have this factor this factor this factor if you take your 2j on this side you take your negative 2j on this side and you multiply all of them then they will lead you to this particular uh, equation and i believe with that we can solve any other complex uh, complex equation uh, where we are required to find the what we are required to find the roots so with that let's check a second example um, on complex numbers